All right. <clears throat> now, as an individuals, beside of this kind of uh, importance uh, of Islamic banking finance to our daily life, we have to know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say that. Uh, uh, and when the prayer is finished, then you may disperse through the land and seek the bounty of Allah and celebrate the praises of Allah often that you may, you may prosper. So from the saying of Allah here, then Allah SWT allow all Muslim, all, all of people to go and to do businesses as many as they can and to gain profit from it. No limitation, no problem at all. Okay, demand and supply rulings and discipline is accepted in Islam. No problem with that. But the thing that Islam opposes is when you when you create a superficial demand and supply. You know, the fake demand and supply. We know the the fake demand and supply is exists in this free market economy. You know, just like uh, speculation, excessive speculation, derivatives, for example, one of the major factors of this fake demand and supply. And we have also monopoly. Uh, for example, you are uh, taking uh, stock, maybe for example, rice or sugar, you just hide it from the market for some time, for, for, for some period of time, so that the, the price will, be, will go up. And at the point of time, you will uh, try to sell the, the, the sugar with the higher price. That is all unethical from Islamic perspective and not allowed. And then the Prophet said, Both feet of son of Adam will not go to the next level. So as a Muslim, we believe that all of us will be uh, justified and will be tested and will be challenged and will be questioned after life, in the hereafter. But before we can go to the paradise or na'uzbillah, go to the other parts of, okay, all right, we have to be questioned all of our deeds in this world. So here the Prophet say, your feet, you will not move to the next level all right, until you being questioned and your, your deeds will be secretized uh, from five, five angles, for example, here he said, an umri vima afna, and so on and so forth. But from these five, the Prophet mentioned two of them will be about your income and spending. So two out of five is about your money. So meaning that our income and spending or our wealth will be the major focus at that day. So it's very, very uh, uh, crucial for us to learn, to learn and to avoid anything which uh, 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 contradict with the uh, ruling of the prophets and ruling of Islam. And then the second caliph of Islam, Umar al-Khattab said, Do not do commercial transaction in our market except you have equipped yourself with the knowledge of Islamic jurisprudence in this, in this market. All right? So most of the Muslim today, they are already in the market without knowing the rulings. That is the, uh, the problem. And then, this is uh, 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 what we call um, the outline, the simple outline of the, the, the most crucial elements and crucial topics that must be uh, 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 equipped by all Muslims, especially interest, gambling, contractual increase over capital loan, gambling, speculative or electoral contracts in which obligation and benefits accruing the participating parties are not fully defined at the time when the contract became effective, leading to either winning or losing arising from mere chance instead of work and efforts. Or you can say also gambling is winning on the other loss. loss all right? So there will be only one party will win while the other parties will lose. All right? So that is gambling. As compared to buying and selling in Islam, 
they are win-win situation. For example, you have the money, I have the laptop. So we agree mutually that the laptop I will sell it to you with the price of 1,000 crown. You agree. So, win-win situation. You get the laptop, I got the money. As for gambling, the winner will get it and the other will lose. Alright, so that is gambling. So, ambiguities, gharam, uncertainties, we will discuss about it later on. And then, qimar, uh, consumption of uh, uh, beverage, alcoholic beverages, consum consumption of pork, illicit and so on. Alright, so now we want to look at uh, Islamic banking and finance uh, throughout the world and how it's, its potential is there or not. So we can see from here that the uh, Muslim population are huge. Research shows there are ample opportunities in Islamic finance remain untapped. If Islamic finance want to tackle Muslim population only, it would be very, very huge. Alright? But the problem is that the Muslim, Muslim themselves are not equipped themselves with this kind of knowledge so that they are astray, astray away from the uh, prohibition, astray away from the uh, 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 limitation and uh, rulings of Islam. And then you can say, you can see here, potential customer base, world's 1.5 billion Muslim. 1.5 billion. Bulk of Muslim population is young. 60% of global Muslim population is under 25 years. Muslim high net worth individual is 1.5 to 1.8 trillion US dollar. But most of the capital, most of this amount of money goes to the conventional market. It goes to the non-shari'ah compliant activities. What a pity. Takaful penetration rate below 2% in the Middle East region. So. Middle East region. They are speaking Arabic language, they are speaking Quranic language, but they don't, don't understand the Quran itself. Petrodollar wealth. So most of the petrodollar is in the Muslim countries. 500 billion per annum US dollars. So you can see top world oil, a uh, top world oil net exporter in 2008, Saudi Arabia, Russia, you see? Saudi Arabia, Muslim countries, UAE, Iran, Kuwait, all right? And Nigeria is also they have uh, mix, right? What is GCC? GCC is uh, uh, Gulf countries, Gulf countries. Okay, Kuwait, for example, UAE, Bahrain. That is GCC. Okay, now Islamic asset as compared to that statistic. Now we want to look at the this statistic. Islamic assets today, globally, uh, in two thousand and ten. Uh, 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 um, we can see that uh, all right so Islamic asset total in total okay I think on the slide but in total um, I think uh, last week I attend a conference in Islamic finance summit in London they say in total the latest latest uh, figures all right is about 1 trillion US dollar total Islamic assets in the world total is that huge or what? what do you think? 1 trillion all Islamic bank, all Islamic financial institution all takaful operators, huge or not? not much but very tiny yeah. how do you define asset? Is that? Yeah. We look at the uh, the Islamic financial institution book. They have liabilities and asset. So total asset. So normally in their um, every year financial report, they will uh, disclose their total asset. So we take it from that total asset of Islamic bank, how much, and then we just put it together. Right? So before that, before that, we have to know one trillion. Not in the slide, but in other slides. One trillion US dollar. If you want to know it is big, huge or not, do you know what is the biggest conventional bank in the world? Biggest. But no. No idea? No, I don't know. BNP Paribas from France. Their total asset of the bank is 3.8 trillion US dollar. 
Only one bank can beat the Islamic bank. All Islamic bank in the world. Islamic financial institution, not bank only. All Islamic financial institutions. Okay, Barclays Bank. They have in UK. They have 1.3 trillion US dollar total asset. So that that means Islamic bank and Islamic financial institution is at their infant level. Still at their infant. Even though they have been in the market for 30 years, but they are still infant. And they are still grocery shop as compared to supermarket. Okay? Do you have Tesco here? Don't have. No. <laughs> but you know Tesco. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know Tesco is a big, huge supermarket. Yeah. They have all kinds of things. They are, in UK, they have a petrol station as well. And they have their own brand. If you have a bread, they have a bread. If you have this, they have, you have oil, they have uh, <laughs> oil. They have anything. Very big. Is it easy for a grocery shop to beat the price of this supermarket and giant supermarket? Is it easy? It's not easy. But in fact, Islamic financial institution today, they almost beat the conventional market in terms of consumer product. That is unbelievable, you know? They almost be, and some of their products are better in terms of monetary calculation as compared to the conventional banking. That's in, uh, with a special reference to Malaysia, for example. A special reference to Malaysia. Malaysian Islamic Bank better in terms of monetary, put aside spiritual, right? This one is monetary. It's better. Okay? If you like to know, I, I can share with you after this, inshallah. Alright? So, the question. Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering, because UK is in this, but US is not. Is it in the others, or is it or we don't? In the others. In the others. Because in, in US, it's very, very tiny. So, UK, they, they, they try to be one of the, they try to be one of the European Islamic financial hub. They try to be like that. And there are rumors saying that uh, in UK, because of the Olympics in 2012, they need a lot of cash, you know. So they know in order to get cash, is from the petrol dollar, petrol money. So in order to attract the petrol money, petrol dollar, you have to have Islamic Bank, Islamic Finance. So that is the rumors. I don't know whether or not it is true or otherwise. Okay? So we can see here that uh, Malaysia is 11% uh, uh, of the global banking asset uh, from, comes from Malaysia and Saudi Arabia, Iran and so on and so forth. So uh, in total, 1 trillion. The latest figure, 1 trillion is very tiny. And the bank, the biggest Islamic bank in the world is Rajhi. Rajhi is very, very tiny as well. Okay, so this is uh, when the current chaos and turmoil in the financial world happened in 2008, 2009, okay? So, a lot of parties, a lot of people are seeking for alternatives, all right? So, some of them, so for example, Vatican say Islamic finance may help Western banks in crisis, okay? Uh, and also uh, financial crisis present opportunity to Islamic banks and then uh, Professor Rob Wilson say there has been much questioning of the values underpinning the conventional financial system and the search for alternative means that Islamic banks are likely to receive more attention All right, especially as their raison d'etre is morality in financial transactions based on religious teachings Okay. So from here you can see that there are opportunities, but Islamic Bank is not yet, Islamic financial institution is not yet ready to, um, to uh, what we call, um, to entertain this kind of uh, demand. Because they are still small. Because conventional bank, they want the alternative to, of all of their products. They want Islamic Bank to propose to them, okay, what is, the alternative for our derivatives, for example. 